June the 4th, I rose in this house and asked all Canadians to join me in prayer for Lydia Hurley, a 13-year-old who was severely injured by a garbage truck while exiting her school bus. It is with joy that I tell this house our prayers have been answered. On October the 9th, Lydia returned home. She remains fragile and easily overwhelmed and still faces a difficult journey of recovery. Prayers are still needed and appreciated. On November 1st, a homecoming celebration will be held and thousands of tattered green ribbons will greet her. These ribbons have lined our streets all summer, on trees, on mailboxes, vehicles, and fence posts. The elements have taken their toll on them. But I share the Hurley's gratitude to our community. Quote, these tattered ribbons renew our hope and faith and have regularly reminded us that we do not stand alone, end quote. My heart will be with Lydia and her family as they celebrate. As Lydia said, I'm excited for the Green Ribbon Party. Thank you, Canada, for praying for Lydia. And we indeed are grateful for an MP like that and Canadians who prayed and Michelle and Lydia are here today. What an amazing story. Michelle, tell us what happened and what God has done. Certainly. Uh, I remember the day I'll always remember. It was a sunny Thursday, May the 17th of 2012. We have two other sons, or two sons in addition to Lydia. They had just, I had met their bus. They'd got off the bus. We live in a farm, so went down the lane. I saw them to their after school snack and said, Lydia will be home soon. I'm just going out to do a quick errand. And I left. She was getting off the school bus when a recycling truck didn't see or heed the signals to stop for a school bus, uh, was about to hit the bus, veered onto our farm lane, and hit Lydia just as she was stepping off the bus. Uh, thankfully, I didn't see it, but she was thrown this tremendous distance and had severe traumatic brain injuries as a result, as well as other broken bones and ribs and, and difficulties. Um, but certainly the brain injury was the, the one large question mark that loomed of if she could ever recover from that. And uh, from there we went to Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto uh, and it was a couple of months at Sick Kids of Lydia being in a deep coma and mm -hmm. unresponsive and the number of times that James and I would hold Lydia's hand and say, can you squeeze mommy's hand? And there was no response. And every morning with bated breath the doctors would come in and they'd do their rounds and Lydia, can you squeeze my hand? And there was no response, and we had no idea. So it became such a journey of faith, of trusting God that he, he had saved her. And one of our friends is a firefighter, and he was at the scene of the crime. And he, uh, scene of the crime, <laughs> not a crime scene, but the scene where it happened. And he said, you know, Michelle, the miracle's already happened. She's alive. So then it was sort of sitting with open hands and waiting not knowing what would happen, who Lydia would become, would she ever be able to talk? Would she uh, reach a point where we could have meaningful relationship? Uh, so that was sort of two months at Sick Kids. There were some moments of progress where they were able to then move us to Holland Bloorview in Toronto, which is a rehabilitation hospital for children. And uh, Lydia did emerge from her coma and a beautiful story of her emerging. Uh, it was on August 15th when she was able to actually hear a command and follow through on it. And so we went to the hospital to see her and uh, we heard that she was really responsive. So James, my husband, said to her, you know, can you touch daddy's nose? And she reached out and she touched <laughs> his nose. And, and they said, and can you touch daddy's bald head? And she <laughs> did. And we were delighted. And uh, a week after that, she was able to start talking, and that was phenomenal. It's because the brain injury was so severe that everything had just closed down in this, this time of a coma, and we very much likened it to her being in a cocoon. And we were just waiting to see who God would create and who would emerge. Lydia, how has the Lord helped you through this? Um, well, He has been great right along with me, and... Um, he strengthened me from my accident. Yeah. One of the notable th things in your story is how you responded. Mm -hmm. I mean, from the court proceedings right on down, everybody has been amazed at mm -hmm. the attitude of love and forgiveness that you've had toward the gentleman who I think was reaching down to pick up a cigarette that he was going to smoke and while he was driving a car. And uh, how did you do that? 
you know, it was in some ways an easy uh, decision to make because we've been following Jesus for a long time. So the decision to forgive is, has been made in our lives in little instances all along the way. We've never had anything of this magnitude to have to apply forgiveness to, but all of the little steps along the way have helped us to be ready to, when this came and happened, forgiveness was definitely the right thing because we knew it's what Jesus calls us to, but we also knew that we didn't want to spend any time in anger or bitterness. We wanted all of our energy to be with our family, with Lydia, with, um, yeah, just trusting that God would work this and redeem it. He didn't plan for it, but I believe that he redeems all things. And Lydia was young when it, and she's young now, but when it occurred, it was a brain injury. Yeah. So she is improving remarkably. Talk about that. Sure. Well, uh, she couldn't walk. She couldn't talk at first. So it was in August when she began talking. Uh, she couldn't eat on her own. So for the longest time, she had, uh, you want to say something? What? <laughs> Oh, she was just laying down. <laughs> just this past Canada Day, we reminded Lydia, so she doesn't have any memories of last summer. We told her some of the things that, that happened in her recovery. And uh, as her brain was recovering, there were a lot of automatic trigger type things that happened. And on Canada Day, she kept raising her hand <laughs> and it would stay up like this. And we were joking that there should have been a Canada flag on her hand <laughs> as she was flying the flag. Um, but back to your question, you know, there has been a lot of learning to do. She had to learn to swallow again and to be able to eat. And do you want to talk about that? Eating's still kind of tricky sometimes, isn't it? No? <laughs> Just to be able to chew food properly and swallow it, um, to not drool. Braces don't help, but her braces are back on, right? And Lydia, you, you have a determination to move forward, don't you? And to, to live, don't you? Yeah. Tell us why. Um, Jesus gave me hope strength and determination. And so you're entering grade nine, or in grade nine, I guess, That's effectively different. in a month or two. Yeah. And uh, how is it going back to school? It's um, pretty good. Uh-huh. Yeah. And what about your friends, in addition to your family? You mentioned a girl was there. Um, what do you mean? When, the, when you came out of your coma and the young lady was encouraging you that was a peer. Mm -hmm. uh, it, w it was Catherine. Yeah, you can talk about Catherine, who's a, a dear friend who's been with us on the journey. Right. And uh, she's a pastor at a church in our area. And uh, she just was called to journey deeply with us and to pray for Lydia. So she's often spoken great words of encouragement to all of our hearts, really. And can we talk about the power of prayer in this whole situation? Mm -hmm. I mean, people have really prayed, yeah. and we want them to continue to pray because we know that in a matter of time, God is gonna make all things new. Yeah. Tell us how that was important. I think it was part of our sustenance, part of our daily bread to know that we were regularly being carried and brought before Jesus. And when I think of what we have journeyed through and all the uncertainty and the unknowns and, and the losses too, because Lydia's different, there have been things that she's lost, uh, certainly beautiful things that he's recreating and gaining, but the power of prayer from people we know, but also people we don't know, to just enter in and say, I'm praying for you, that's been a gift. And Lydia regularly gets it if we're out in our community, people will come up to her and say, I've been praying for you, right? Yeah. And how does that make you feel? Um, find God sometimes, um... Is overwhelmed maybe a good word? It's, it's like a gift. Yeah. It's like receiving a gift. Well, it is a tremendous gift. I want to, what about your husband? I mean, you as a family really illustrate what we're offering in our book this month, holding your family together. Had you all not been together, you would have come apart. We know often parents divorce when there's a problem or they have conflict, but you said it's brought you and your husband even closer together? Yes, it has. Explain that. Um, well, 
we've always come together under Christ's Lordship as a family, and that's been an intentional part of um, us as a couple praying together every evening, uh, praying with our children, and then to be in this spot where there is no place to turn except the very rock that we stand on and to be rooted in Jesus. Uh, we've done that together. We've both dealt with our emotions and our grief in different ways, but there's been this coming together for the two of us. and. Uh, Yes, we've been married for 21 years, but I would have to say the last year has strengthened us and pulled us together even more. And, and, and it's because of Christ over us. And right? what a witness this has been in the Waterloo Kitchener area. You've talked about how your community has been amazing. Can you just say a word? Sure. I've noticed how you know, wonderful Canadians are being an American here. Yeah. Very gracious, but they've been ultra gracious, haven't they? Amazing, yes. So a beautiful story and visual point in, in this uh, was uh, the day after the the accident, I received a text message saying, what are Lydia's favorite colors? And I quickly fired off lime green and turquoise, not really knowing why I was being asked. Uh, well, I came home from the hospital that day to find that they had started a, a lime green ribbon campaign. And it was whenever you see a lime green ribbon, pray for Lydia. And they started to show up everywhere in our community. So they were on fence posts and mailboxes, <laughs> trees, all along the boulevard in, in Baden and New Hamburg, New Dundee, the small communities around St. Agatha where we live. And it was beautiful. So this party that Harold Albrecht mentioned when we saw the clip was very much on November 1st. We said, let's invite everyone to welcome Lydia home, who's had a green ribbon come and wave it and say, yay, look at what God has done and celebrate that uh, Lydia could return home after months in the hospital. And Lydia, you're a hero, and we are really, really proud of you, and we know that you are gonna continue to improve, and everybody is saying, you know, way to go, way to have a great attitude. I want us to take hands, and I want us to just pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Lydia, and we thank you for sparing her life, and we ask in the name of Jesus that you would totally heal every area of her mind and body. Give her strength. Thank you, God, for her mom and dad. Thank you, God, for the prayers of so many people in Canada and beyond. And we ask that they'll sense the undergirding of those prayers in the days ahead. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Thank you. Please continue to pray for this precious mom and daughter.